beat Bulldozer Max Rumont, the, the eight-time Best Match Tournament winner, the former two-time world champion, the owner of H2O Wrestling, and if there is one podcast to listen to, that is the Death Match Russell Podcast. Let's get ultraviolet, motherfuckers. And good evening once again, fans. You're listening to the Death Match Russell Podcast. They're more than welcome to come on to every time they want to come on. Oh, man, those girls pop to the light. All right. It's a budget thing. Let's see what he's up to. Thank you, man, and thank you for giving me the time. Tune in right now. And good evening, everyone. You're listening to another episode of Death Natural Podcast with my guest at this time, the frat boy himself, Bryce Cannon. How are you, man? That is right. The pleasure is all yours. The frat boy has come. Life, to life, the death the match podcast. Life for the light, light for the party has begun. How's that? That's correct. When Bryce Cannon is around, when Bryce Cannon is on set, when Bryce Cannon is in the ring, the party is going down. And unfortunately, half of these chooches watching are not invited. So, well, you know what? We just, well, you know what? Bryce, let me get right to it. This we just I just had a guest on and he called you out. His name's Hot Stuff Drew. Hot Stuff Piercy Drews from, from Ohio. So what do you got to say to him? Hot Stuff Piercy Drews? Yeah. Let's see. Obviously he's done some studying. Obviously mm-hmm. he's looked at what Bryce Cannon can do. Obviously he's seen that I am going to be in the Talking Shop of Mania 2. I was in Talking Shop of Mania 1. He knows that once I lay fingers on him, once I pin him one, two, three, once he steps foot in the presence of Bryce Cannon in front of any kind of camera or social media, he knows that his his career is going to take off. So I don't blame this hot stuff dude wanting to come after me. He can, I've never even heard of him, but obviously he's heard of the frat boy. And that's all I got to say right there. Well, let's just say he's been uh, wrestling around the scene of uh, the Rockstar Pro, and uh, he made his journey down to New Jersey for its debut at H2O versus one Orrin Veidt. So he uh, made his presence known. Well, I would love to go to Ohio, but I'm pretty sure all of those chooches out there have COVID anyway. But after the virus is done, the frat boy is more than willing. He can put, pay my plane ticket. He can make sure my penthouse is ready for the after party whenever I beat hot stuff, Piercy Drews. But I'll accept the challenge. Get somewhere to book it, man. Mm -hmm. Beyond that, let's get to it. What's going on, man? You've been killing it lately on the scene I've seen. And you're getting, getting a lot of stuff going down for you. Oh, yeah. I mean... The thing is, everybody wants to make excuses. Everybody wants to say, oh, COVID ruined wrestling. Oh, COVID's ruined this for me. COVID's done that. When you're the frat boy, the hustle don't stop. I've been going day in and day out since this COVID happened. Since Mm -hmm. COVID, I've won tag team championship gold. I've done two international pay-per-views. I've done main events. I'm everywhere. I've wrestled in three different states already since COVID. There is no excuse why other chooches in this business should not be doing what the frat boy is doing, and that's grinding. A couple of my peers even mentioned, Bryce, what are you doing? You're one of the most booked guys that I, that I know right now, and it's called putting yourself out there. I mean, look at me. I'm a star just looking at me, so I don't blame promoters for wanting to book me. No, and I see what you you could do in the ring, and my God, and with those beard, with those white claws in hand, my gosh, it's a deadly, you know, it's a deadly weapon of choice. But you that's know, right, brother. It's, it's uh, what flavor we got tonight? What do we what are we drinking? What what we flavor are do you like? We are drinking the black cherry right now, and I mean, if that's you, on my list. That's my my go to drink right tell, there. I got the Bryce Cannon logo on there, just in case we got some gimmick infringement going on. If you know what I'm yes, saying. Yes. So. Yes. I like that. I like that. I don't have yeah. I don't have any of those on hand, do I? No, I got. <laughs> but yeah, man, just mm-hmm. with me staying busy is key. Uh, this past weekend, I did uh, three shows: mm-hmm. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, um, Fort Valley, Georgia, Heflin, Alabama, and also uh, Macon, Georgia. So all up and down. There's no excuse not to wrestle right now. 
No, and, and you got to make your way to down to the shore, man. You got to get yourself on the East Coast. Oh, you know, I uh, to to uh, wrestle to wrestle in the shore would be one of the things. Like heaven. I'm, I'm a huge mark for Jersey Shore, so uh, so that that's definitely on the list. You know what? You know what, Bryce, and you're probably going to ask me. How far do I live by that Jersey Shore house? Oh, yeah, yes. exactly. I'm 15, 20 minutes away from that house. <laughs> wow. Yeah. 20 minutes from, yeah. Definitely uh, find somewhere to get me on over there, and you'll have to take me by there. I'll, I'll have to mark out and take some uh, pictures and whatnot. Hell, I may even well, stay there. Well, I have some promoters I can contact with uh, after this is all settled. All the smoke is clear. We'll talk later. Awesome. You know, business is business off air. So I don't want to be plugging stuff on air. You know, oh, we yeah. can't do that. You know, behind the closed door, behind <laughs> the closed messenger, they call it nowadays, right? Messenger. Oh, yeah. But man, you know, I'm 100 percent opening to coming to to the shore to show you guys what the frat boy can do out there. Now, what's this guy? This this guy I'm seeing in the ring, man. His name's Wright. Mr. Wright. Mr. Wright, yeah. I actually had a match against him at uh, Georgia Independent Professional Wrestling last month. It mm. didn't go my way, but I did some tragic stuff earlier in the night that kind of threw everyone off. So he was a yeah. little on edge. I saw what you did to his valet uh, at the one show and uh, <laughs> took her little, little lit up fucking oh, yeah. boa. Come on. Yeah. She didn't even expect that. <laughs> oh, no. And that's the thing is nobody knows what to expect when the frat boy's around. I'll still by the, throw up. By the way, by I'll the way, did the you? Hear, by the way, that was a horrible setup. The sound. Did you hear that play by the the music was horrible. Whoever yeah. did the PA, PA system, whatever that night. <laughs> yeah. Whatever it is, what it is. But you wrestled, you kicked ass. That's all I could say. Oh yeah, unfortunately, I didn't come out with the W. But I mean, his, his yeah. valet slapped me. Number one, interfered in the match. That should have been a disqualification right there. Mm -hmm. But you know what? I guess I'll be the bigger man and say I lost. However, mm -hmm. it was at an unfair advantage. Right. Oh, Bryce, who's this Jake Foe? Foe. I don't know this guy. Jake oh, Foe? No, no, no. But, no. I don't know. You know a lot of these goo gurus? I don't even know any of these people. Yeah. <laughs> he's, know. he's one of the groupies that follow me around. Oh, yeah. Oh, those kind of people, huh? Oh, yeah, man. what what's he saying? I, I can't see know. what he's saying. Uh, it, yeah, there's it's a hidden chat. That's why. That's good. And he says Bryce really, really is the future star. So excited to see what becomes of him. Well, we said it here right uh, hey, before. He actually said something nice. Usually, he's over here heckling me, trying to get me to pop or whatever. But it never works. Really, but really? Uh, Jake, I will take that and run with it, man. Um, I definitely appreciate that. I'm glad you see the potential that I see in myself. So that's mm. all. And we got uh, uh, who else? Just local guests here. My friends, Pete, saying hello. Hello, everyone. Hello, hello. I don't pay attention to them. Hello, to all my... the churches of the Death Deathmatch Podcast. Yes. What do you like about podcasts? Let me let me get your opinion. What do you um, like them? Do you, is it oh, it's yeah. different? I, I love like is it podcasts. how many how many how many have you been on? Uh, I've been on a handful of them, actually. Uh, I actually did yes. one with a guy out of Ohio, so that may be where uh, that Chooch Percy uh, heard of mm -hmm. me. But, um, yeah, I, I love doing them just because it's it's not really nerve-wracking or anything. I don't have an audience, you know, in front of me. I can kind of mm -hmm. say what I want. I can drink the claw if I want. I can, Absolutely. I can, I can be me. And you can I mean, curse if you want, you know. Yeah, so, I try. Yeah. I try to avoid cursing, but I mean, it yes. slips out every now and then. I know, I know. But yeah, you come into my studio. You have a nice setup right here with all these little decorations and yeah, nice that black, must be nice black studio. You know, my studio wall behind me. You know. Yeah, if uh, if that booking comes along in Jersey, uh, I'll definitely have to stop by and do an in person live uh, interview. Yeah, or just do one at a show. Bryce, yeah. Let me get this straight. Bryce Cannon on a screen versus seeing Bryce Cannon in person is two completely different things. You're right. Yeah. Number one, Cause... we can after party after this together and you can see how wild I get. And I mean, some of the guys uh, in the locker rooms know exactly what I'm talking about. Uh, mm -hmm. 
I mean, I've partied with the likes of Logan Creed, you know, MLW's Logan Creed. And uh, yes. I mean, multiple stories come out of that one night that me and him hung out. He won't go out with me again. I'll tell you that much. Mm-hmm. He all, all he says is the last thing I remember is taking shots with you. Actually, I see Lo- actually Logan came to uh, a show actually for H2O one time. Oh, I yeah. Yeah. yeah, he was Logan. on our first. He was on our first undiscovered undercard, like under, like a no holds bar, like an underground show. You know, oh, it was like, a, yeah, yeah. Logan's one of those guys that I give um, partial He's credit the, to my career yeah. to because uh, before, before I even step foot in a wrestling ring, well, mm. I take that back. I'd taken maybe three or bumps or so. Uh, Logan actually took me and a couple of guys down to a, a training seminar mm-hmm. close to Florida. And this was before I had all the glitz and glams of the frat boy and everything mm-hmm. before I had even done a show. Like I was early on in my career. Um, and I went down there and blew it out of the park. It was a, um, WWN tryout actually. And, um, they allegedly say that I would have won, um, but I didn't have the experience. Sorry. An Instagram uh, notification just popped up on my phone where none other than the big LG just mentioned me in a comment. So I'll, nice. I'll, I'll save that for another time. You know, no big deal. Yeah. You know, I'll, I'll just see him Friday night, you know? Yeah. Yeah. The big show coming up. This mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Coming up actually this week I'm seeing on the, on the card here, you know, I'm looking at the card, uh, whole bunch of wrestlers uh luke gallows luke gallows or yeah. i mean gallows uh drew or whatever his name is yeah, doc gallows Marcus. doc gallows yeah a big big impacts on doc gallows yeah man he he's awesome mm-hmm. um he's also been a positive uh person in my wrestling career as of late um mm-hmm. i actually just got to meet him this year and i mean mm-hmm. ever since then it's just been wheels running you know um mm-hmm. So uh, realistically, I mean, I'm very humbled and blessed about that opportunity with him because mm-hmm. he's a book full of knowledge, met a lot of people through him. Um, mm-hmm. So hopefully when all this COVID stuff's over, you know, I mean, big opportunities will kind of happen for me. So, yeah, it was, that. wasn't for our friend. Uh, shout out to uh, David of Booten Hill. Booten Hill. That's right. I've been, man. Dealing with, been dealing with him for a uh, little over a yeah. year now. Mm-hmm. Great guy. Um, super passionate yeah. about what he does, always willing to help. And um, you know what? And we're proud of him because he served our country. You that's know, right. For, Happy for the best. Day. Yeah. Thank you for your service, David. Mm-hmm. But, My, yeah. I what see else? you got a collar and elbow, the uh, collar and yeah. elbow brand here. Yeah, I got, I've been going a couple things. Yeah, that's awesome. Uh, they were actually at the, two filmings I did of uh, Talk and Shop of Mania. Um, mm-hmm. They took the promo pic that you used. Uh, I've got a shirt that hasn't even been released yet for Talk and Shop of Mania too. Not sure if I'll be able to say that or not, but oh. uh, <laughs> no, no, it's okay. Yeah. I didn't reveal yeah. the, I didn't reveal the design or anything, but uh, right, right. Yeah, so a um, lot of cool things happening though, for real. Mm-hmm. What? Well, let's uh, let's talk like. Who would you want to face in the ring if you got an opportunity to wrestle for a big contract? Anybody could be yeah. current, could be past. Um, let's see, man. There's so many. I think one of I, my dream matches, just because I'm a mark for him, uh, t- to this day, I mean, the Miz, I would love just to get in the ring with him. Um, tag team or singles, to be honest. But uh, I think the one person for me would be uh, Mr. Perfect. He uh, he was a great guy, great wrestler. And, I mean, just the stuff that he did in the ring was he, – he didn't do too much, but he did enough to entertain, if that makes sense, mm-hmm. which is, is kind of like how I love to do it. I mean – What if I told – what if I got – what if you – I if I booked a match right now and just said, hey, Bryce, you're going to go in the ring with the – the bad boy himself, Joey Janela and Sony Kiss. Okay. The king of the white claws, also. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that would be a battle there, right there. I mean, I got the white claw on my gear and everything. So I know. I know. He could uh he could get his one, I guess, but no, that would be super dope. Um mm-hmm. 
I would have to pick between my two uh, tag teams that I run around the South with the uh, frat party with Eddie Honcho or yes. currently um, the exotic youth with uh, Cornelius Pepperbottom and uh, Zach Mosley. Mm. I think, I think I would go with Mosley just because, uh, or the exotic youth, just because we would be able to get the job done. Me and Honcho, we get the job done. It's just a little more gaga in a sense where mm. I think, uh, the exotic youth and I would hit this uh, nail on the head, and we take care of those weasels like, like they're trash. Maybe I'll have to oh. get 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 them on here. Exactly, Let's get them on this podcast. Hear what they got to say. Ooh, so I have to hit them up. Pancho or the other one has been hit me up. Pepper's been hit me up. Oh yeah, comments with comments. So, oh Pepper Bottom, that's my dude right there. Yeah, I mean. Look, you, you're going to be able to see the exotic youth in yeah. Florida, Georgia. Mm. Ten, I think we're working on Tennessee. Mississippi's already been booked. Like, you're going to see the frat boy and the exotic World Tour. Youth World tour. That's World right. Tour. World New Tour. New Jersey. New Jersey. If bookers are watching in New Jersey, the exotic youth, the frat boy, book us and guarantee your audience will pack the building out. Titan Proud Wrestling, Titan Championship Wrestling. You hearing this, you guys? Titan there, Championship Wrestling, biggest Good. show of the year coming coming this weekend. I'm looking forward to it. You it said this weekend, this weekend, Mount Olympus Battle Rumble. Yes. Ooh, ooh, a big rumble for the gold. Well, you gold. see, I've I'll probably be recovering from Friday night on Saturday. Uh, yeah. However, I don't mind driving. Right, I don't mind. Yeah, or hop on a private jet. Mm -hmm. Fly right paid, over there. Paid by David or one of those other people, or my dad. <laughs> my dad has it all. My dad does too. Well. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. Uh, that would be super dope. I mean, I would love to work. I, I want to get in Florida more, but Jersey would be awesome. I mean, um, I want to go the out crowd, to Cal I'll tell you what, our, you know, the crowd wise, it's it's just more fun, family based crowds. And it's what what you want, you know, more energetic, hype crowds. Oh, right? yeah. Douchey, douchey, annoying fans in the front row that are just, you know, they don't give a sh crap about you guys, you know? Yeah, well, the, I mean, the, the Heflin, Alabama crowd. That was my first mm -hmm. time working there, and man, they get into it. Mm -hmm. Those hillbillies, I mean, their life depends on this stuff because mm -hmm. this was the first show in eight months for them. It was actually right. to the date for them, and mm -hmm. man, do they like me and Honcho almost got into a fight because they said that Honcho allegedly uh, spit on the kid, which oh jeez, which didn't happen. No, no. yeah. And, uh, but yeah, like the, this dude was trying to get over the barricade and stuff like that. It was pretty awesome. I mean, he would have gotten the paddle straight to the head, but I mean, that was on him mm -hmm. if he wanted to. No, no, that's your, that's your baby. That's your go to. Yeah. <laughs> that's your other, that's your, uh, enforcer right there. <laughs> oh, yeah. Also, you know, that paddle, I mean, pe people know about it. And I mm. mean, I think the, the best part um, of this gimmick, I mean, it's not even really a gimmick to me. It's just how I live, mm -hmm. um, is the fact that White Claw has gotten over with it. Um, mm -hmm. I've gotten frat flags. They get it. They're over. Um, mm -hmm. The paddle is over. I mean, people are starting to recognize um, who I am, what I bring to the table, and, you know, the things that I'm willing to do. People are starting to catch on. Mm -hmm. that and i'm trying to get away from that hokey he's a joke type guy but i yeah. definitely believe especially if you watch the last gipw uh show on fight tv um mm -hmm. you'll see that you'll you'll see that i'm tired of being taken as a joke i mean you you blatantly see us just come in there and just wreak havoc on a tag team match that we weren't even a part of mm-hmm which you said you watched. I mean, what what was yeah. your 
what was your thought process on that watching that were you expecting it were you like oh uh, i just you got you just did what you had to do but you know hey but you lost you know you lost and you know and sorry for the loss of that promoter guy too or the uh, guy you know it's a shame he died yeah you know, it, <laughs> you know. You always lose. You always lose one in the business. You know that yeah. sucks. Yeah, Jack was a good one too. I mean, it it mm-hmm. sucked that he uh, left. I mean, it, behind the scenes, I'll go ahead and say it break kayfabe a little bit. But Jack was one of the nicest guys as far as wanting mm-hmm. to make sure everybody was good in the back, make sure everybody knew what they were doing, making sure hey, you knew that you were special for being there and special for being a part of the show. Um, mm-hmm. I only got to know Jack for maybe a year or so, but uh, mm-hmm. definitely one of the nicest guys. I mean, uh, yesterday was a year ago. I dislocated my patella um, in a match, took an enziguri, mm-hmm. stepped back to sell, and my knee just went out. Um, one wow. of the weird, weirdest things that's ever happened to me, but um, mm-hmm. fast forward to December, I believe it was, Jack actually had a fan make me – a uh, personal paddle. I don't use it in the ring, but I mean, it's made out of an actual boat oar and everything. I mean, one of the nicest things ever. Um, so that was super dope. Um, mm-hmm. But yeah, Jack, I mean, he was super dope. That's awesome. That's awesome. Good man. Going to miss him. Yeah. But uh, so, like, uh, what's your go to? What's your go to? Go to food after a show, man, or like you know, like a great treat for yourself. You know? Man, if <laughs> after a show is definitely a Waffle House, just because it's usually late. <laughs> good old Waffle Houses. Oh my god, uh, that's so the, the that's the go, that's the go to place. You know that uh, for wrestlers. Yeah, every chicken, every chicken, chicken hash brown bowl is pretty good, um, mm-hmm. smothered and covered. But um, man, I'm a wing guy. Lemon pepper wings is it for me. I mm. could, uh, I go oh, to man. Wild Wings and just chow down, drink a couple of brewskis, and mm-hmm. I could just eat all day, just wings. Yeah. Like if yes. I, if that was my last meal in prison, wings. Yeah. If you could get them smuggled in. You know? <laughs> yeah. But, uh, yeah. Who's who are you currently listen to rock wise? Who's your uh, go to band nowadays? Um, I would probably say Fozzy, just because I keep it in the wrestling business a lot. I mean, I listen to a lot of different genres, um, mm. but here lately it's just been whatever is popular on TikTok. I'll go and uh, <laughs> listen to those songs, mm. but uh, just because they're usually catchy. But um, yeah, rock would be Fozzy. I mean, mm-hmm. those guys have come a long way, I believe. And I actually, not to knock it, I, I, Fozzy is awesome. Also, I just listened to the release of wrestler Leo Rush's uh, "Do You Remember" soundtrack. Uh huh. Just came came out pretty dope too. So check that out. If you like the hip hop, hippity hop era of wrestling, you know. Yeah. Yeah, and I mean, I'll music. I'll listen to like old school stuff too. Mm-hmm. I mean, but but my thing, I, I'm a fan of Nickelback. I see a lot of people knock on Nickelback, but that's one of the greatest bands out there. I mm-hmm. mean, I, I don't, I don't see the whole uh, Nickelback sucks thing. I don't really get that. I don't get behind that. No, I, I, I'm the, I'm the uh, Dave Matthews to the, uh, you know, to the Nirvana, to of course Nirvana. Come on. Oh yeah. You know? And the Foo Fighters as well. Yeah, Pink Floyd's good. Mm-hmm. I, uh, I actually went to a. Um, not a knockoff band, but a uh, mm-hmm. whatever they call them, the cover cover bands. Yeah, Boom, that's it. Bands. Cover band. Yes. Like, what's the name of that? Um, mm-hmm. but yeah, I went to one of their concerts a couple of years ago, and man, it was mm-hmm. it was it was good. They actually sounded just like them, so that was good. I've I, I've had the ex- I've had experience like that too. I've seen the band Les Les Zeppelin play. <laughs> you know these, the le- uh, les- lesbian band, but my god, they can. Rock. Oh yeah. Talk about See, that, that's what I. That's but what I like. Was, is, but but you know what? To hear these people actually, they were playing in a mountaintop camp resort. My God, it was like you there, you were there with the Led Zeppelin playing for real. Yeah. Like echoing through the cabin, you know, the mountaintop. 
Yeah, see, I like whenever a um, an artist mm-hmm. or artists sound exactly how they do, like on the radio. It just makes mm-hmm. it more enjoyable to me. I hate whenever they sound different in, in person. I, mm-hmm. I don't know why. It's like a pet peeve of mine that, uh, with going to a concert. If you sound different, uh, I'll write you off. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, how about movie-wise? What are you into? Who are you, what's your uh, go to? There's so much crap out there right now. Yeah, so much go, out. Go-to movie would definitely be The Hangover. That, that's it for me, dude. I will laugh. I People can't watch that movie with me because I'll just I, – I know the whole movie. I'll just say the lines with them. Yeah, and, it's, like an, it's like Animal House, you know? Yeah, it's, it's the best. I mean, like one, uh, two and three were okay, but there's nothing like the original Hangover. Mm-hmm. Right on, right on. Well, this was awesome, man. Let's call it a night because I got to get up. I'm a garbage man, so I got to pick up the trash in the morning. Oh, so you got to pick up all the wrestling fans, huh? Yeah, that's it. I got to find all the figures on the ground. Right? <laughs> no, I find stuff once in a while, man. You never know what I find in the garbage. Oh, yeah. I find, oh, yeah. I find toy belts. It's amazing. Nice. Junk is junk. Treasures is treasures, right? Yeah. <laughs> Another man is another man's treasure. Bryce, let's do this again, my friend, after the holidays. Oh, yeah, most definitely. I mean, I'm always down. Maybe we mm-hmm. could do a uh, three-way call with the exotic youth, have Zach Mose and Pepper Bottom on here, if that's an option. Yes, yes there is. There's three. I could get up to ten guests on this. Yes. That's awesome. Well, I know. before we close out, um, a couple of places that I would like to plug. Um, Coastal Empire Wrestling, that will be hosting the um, – Talking Shop of Mania 2 viewing party and pre-show this Friday in Savannah, Georgia. Uh, know you people in Jersey probably don't have anything to do other than the event that he talked about earlier. Mm-hmm. So come on down to Savannah, Georgia. Check it out. we got four great matches going to happen. I'm in a, a six-man tag match against the Storybook Queers and Matt Odom. Which there's a long history you can check out. Storybook, <laughs> storybook right. queers. I like. I like that's right. That. Yeah, the, oh. premier, the premier queer William Blackwell and Gaston. That's their uh, thing. Mm. Yes, they're both uh, gay. So it's not. No, nothing to knock. I know we can't yeah. knock the. We can't knock right. it now. Is it? Yeah. And um, so and then it's the exotic <laughs> youth. We've got a contract match with Aaron Black and Charlie Anarchy. We've got a triple threat match, Zero, Voodoo Jack, and uh, Scratch Corey Savior. And then the other match is going to be the Rapture out of Florida. They've been on NXT versus Landon Hill and uh, Young DC. So that's going to be an awesome event to mm-hmm. kick off the Talking Shop of Mania 2 viewing party hosted by Doc Gallows. He will be there. Then also Georgia Independent Professional Wrestling, uh, Larry Otto Pro Wrestling, that's ran by Doc Gallows himself. Uh, that's mm-hmm. a promotion that I'm very big into. And we are on Impact Plus. Um, so, yeah, check those out. Follow me on these social media accounts. That's, I believe, all I got right there. All right. You have a good night. All right. You too. Good night, Price. Thank you for coming on. Yep. All right. Close this out and go to town. Fans, That was what a what an interview that was. That was fun. I didn't really... Had a great time with that interview tonight. My guest, uh, frat boy, Bryce, Bryce Cannon. You know what? He's got a bright future ahead of him. He's ready to take on all covers, even you, Hot Pierce Drews. Hot Piercey Drews. And uh, you know what? Big show this weekend. Everywhere for him, he's going to be all around. He'll even make it appears maybe at the East Coast, West Coast, China. You never know where he'll be. He'll take the trip. He'll be on a boat, yacht, you name it. He's ready to cruise. The hot stuff is ready to party all night long. And all fans, I want to say thank you for letting him come on the podcast tonight. And my guest this week on Thursday night, fans, as speaking of Titan Championship Wrestling, you know what? He's an entrant in the Rumble as well. I'm going to be ha- having Rick Recon on the podcast on Thursday night at 8 p.m. live. Fans, stay tuned. Have a great night. Thank you for listening to the Death Match Russell Podcast. Good night, everybody. And a shout-out to the one and only bootandheel.com for all your wrestling apparel, T-shirts, Mark T-shirts like ourselves, uh, myself, and uh, actually 
probably find his stuff on there too. Right, Bruce K. Bryce Cannon, Cannon has some merch as well on there, and I do Death Match Russell podcast. Check them out on on bootandheel.com. Type in Death Match Russell. Check it out. We have some shirts, this and that. Everybody has shirts. Support one another. Buy a t-shirt. It's the holiday season almost, so you know, buy a wrestling t-shirt for one of your friends, fans, anybody. Sweatshirts are getting popular now, so get yourself a hoodie. Fans, I want to say thank you again for being up, coming on. Up. I want to say thank you to my guest again, Bryce, Bryce Cannon, for coming on. And uh, have a good night, everybody. You can find more Deathmatch Russell podcasts on the following social media. DeathmatchRussell.com. Follow on Twitter at DavidNJ32. And on Facebook, Facebook.com slash DJDaveNJ32. Instagram at DavidNJ36. Hey, wrestling fans. I want to mention Collar and Elbow. Collar and Elbow was founded on traditional values of professional wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product intended to connect with people on a, an emotional level. A symbolic relationship where one cannot flourish without the other. We strive to create a product that embodies our passion for professional wrestling expressed through street fashion. Visit CollarAndElbowBrand.com and use the promo code DeathMatchRussellPodcast and save 10% off when you make a purchase. Collar and Elbow where wrestling passion meets street fashion. Find me on Podcast City Network at podcastcity.net, facebook.com slash podcastcitynetwork. Hit the like button and share. And on Twitter at podcastcitynet. You can hear Deathmatch Russell Podcast on Stitcher Radio and on iTunes.